Hey guys, uh, my name's Kiko and I'm kind of new. Uh, I'm going to be doing a show about pop culture and what's going on in the world today. Maybe some like slightly uh, more obscure, maybe not really obscure, but, but um, headlines that are not getting through to you guys on the big news because of other larger headlines like politics and the government and world affairs. So these are other things that that you can take a lot from. And I'm Kiko. I'm I live here in Bakersfield and I'm from the island of Guam where where I got my name, Kiko. And I go to Bakersfield College and I also live and work at Stars Theater. I used to be a dance teacher and I'm also a volunteer with the Red Cross. Basically, you'll see me all over town and it's really hard not to, especially now that I'm on here. How's it going? So It's it's good to have you. Good to have you on Creekcast. Hey, uh, are you what are you studying at BC? Uh, BC? Communication. Oh, cool deal. Yeah. Anything in particular in communications? Uh, public relations. Nice. And now, now here's me relating with the public. <laughs> Where are you hoping to go from here? Um, I mean, like, like from the studio? Well, I mean, oh. when you get your degree. Oh, oh, um, public relations in the entertainment industry. Nice. So you're going to be... I'm going to be... What, what would they call that, by the way? <laughs> public relations. Public relations. In the entertainment industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they would call That's it. That's what they call it. Oh, cool deal. So, uh, uh, you said you came from, when did you move to Bakersfield? Um, <laughs> that was a really face. Uh, that was a really weird face. Um, I, we moved here when I was like five. So, about 1999, moved here from Guam. Also, fun fact, I am an Instagram model, uh, an Instagram model. So, I post, I, I, I wear f fancy outfits and I post them on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter all over the place and they get lots of likes and like shares. Actually, um, I've got, last month I actually hit the 25k on Twitter, 25,000 followers on Twitter. That's fun. And you should check out my my outfits on Instagram or Twitter, whichever one you like. So what's your, what's your Twitter? Oh, um, it's at Kiko Music 94. That's what it is. I'm pretty sure I, that was terrible. No, because I'm always interested in, in other people's Twitter Twitter feeds and how they do. You got twenty five thousand. Yeah, 000. it's real. I, I I'm gonna show it to you right now. That's crazy. I don't know how. I don't even. I'm that, lucky if I have twenty five hundred followers. Well, if you're not an Instagram <laughs> model. That's a good point. People would laugh and scream at me if I was an Instagram model. Someone unfollowed me. That's very irritating. rude. That's rude. Like. Like twenty, like four thousand people unfollowed me just now. <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe twenty-one thousand. That's good. That's nice. a good number. Uh, Dude, um, huh? yeah. No. So, uh, how do you get? To, I mean, just out of curiosity, how do you get to be uh, an Instagram model? I've I've never heard of those. Oh, okay, so, so, um, so Instagram models are kind of like the new, they're, they're kind of like the social media herpes, I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty, um, so it started like in 2011 when social media, when Facebook first came out, and I was a junior in high school, and, uh, one of my friends, she became a social media model herself. She got she start she created an account, an account on this this website called Lookbook. That's not something I have. And but yeah, she would she would 
Um, she would always come to school wearing like the coolest outfits and I was still in my hoodie and like oversized jeans and really bad mop top so yeah she was really cool and people would always ask her how to dress cool like her and she she would take people on these these cool like day outings to the, the Goodwill or the thrift store there's a lot of cool little thrift stores downtown actually and and she show us that you don't have to pay like a whole bunch of money to get nice clothes you can get them like pretty cheap second hand from the thrift store and honestly that's where I get most of my clothes if not like Amazon <laughs> like this this tie I definitely got at Amazon but this shirt was five dollars at Goodwill. Yes, it was. And I mean, you can get like a whole bunch of really nice collared shirts, button down, long sleeve at Goodwill or the thrift shop. And like, what what is it? A blazer, a, a coat, a suit coat. Yeah, you a can blazer. Get those, yeah. At, for pretty cheap like normally to get a, to buy a real suit it I bought a real suit full price one time from a local business uh, that they're, they're not like around anymore Sneeds men's clothing they were really good uh, yeah that was my first suit in two, like six years ago and it was four hundred dollars with a discount um, it was really nice though but you can you can get like you can go to Goodwill or the thrift the thrift store and buy a suit coat for maybe twenty dollars and then you just go buy pants that match it or you know the usual black slacks usually match a lot of things. I also got these really nice brown um, brown brown slacks that are pretty dressy for pretty cheap so is so what you're saying is you can actually get some really cool clothes oh yeah so so the so the deal about being an instagram model going back to the original question is you just wear nice clothes have have an image and you you take pictures and you post them on instagram and you put like a whole bunch of hashtags so that other people see it and if you if you put enough pictures and people like your pictures enough, uh, enough, they like your pictures and share them and they comment, well then you can go around and call yourself an Instagram model, model, because you're you're modeling on Instagram. But I wouldn't like go around calling people. I mean, calling yourself an Instagram model, in, in model until you actually have a following. Yeah, so that's how I became an Instagram model. I, I just, I just put, I created an image, and I dressed up nicely, and I took nice pictures, and I posted them on Instagram, and put a whole bunch of hashtags, which is really cumbersome, and you can you can see them all on my Instagram, Kiko Music ninety four. So how long does it how long did it take for you to get that many followers? Four years. Four years. So it took, yeah, it's been a while. Was in this was every day. Um, I wouldn't post. Uh, maybe like a couple times a week. Sometimes I I I do it like every day, but then I'm just because it gets really hot in here here in Bakersfield. And then, like, I'm walking around Bakersfield College, which is a big campus, like, wearing this three-piece suit all day, which is just not really practical. But I do look pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means, so you wore a three-piece suit to no, class? Um, yeah. And people were able to follow you. Let me see if I can say this correctly. People were able to follow you on Instagram and Twitter based on the clothes that you wore and some of the stuff that you... Yeah. Nice. Now, because I've heard people, they talk about, um, 
you know, the amount of followers and friends and social media people that they have, and a lot of people like to bank this stuff into bigger things. So, where you, where you, are you hope are you hoping that this um, social media thing will move into something bigger? Um, I'm hoping it can connect me with appropriate people, in which I can talk to them with the original topic, the opening topic being. Uh, my social media following and then I can lead it uh, I can lead the conversation into me like working for a company doing something so you're hoping that this will be like part of your brand yeah no okay nice okay so what is it do you have what you, you want to uh, talk about today um well one of the the, the news stories on Twitter today that I thought was really important, unfortunately, is uh, experts say that alcohol-related deaths have sh increased sharply, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So here it says, according to a study conducted at University of Michigan by a liver professor, Sumit Azrani, not to be confused with Professor Mazrani, the guy who who opened Jurassic Park. Uh, that, that according to the to that study, alcohol related liver cirrhosis, which is something that used to be considered a disease that people only de develop after thirty years of heavy alcohol consumption. So the cirrhosis of the li liver, which is caused by having to digest a, a lot of alcohol, is now showing up in a lot of a lot of people in the twenty five to thirty age range, and then and then following that, um, another report says that. The number of 25 to 34 year olds who die an annually from alcohol related liver diseases nearly tripled between 1999 and 2016. In 1999, the amount of people who, um, of 25 to 30 year olds who died of alcohol related liver disease was 259. But in 2016, that number jumped up to 767 that's more than than three times the amount of people and maybe so, we could so why because i always do cirrhosis as uh, an alcoholic disease in older people why do you think it's happening more and more to the younger generation now i mean why are they drinking so much alcohol I think it's just a, a sign of the times. Mm. Things are are different. Maybe in the in the eighties, seventies, sixties, everything before nineteen ninety nine. In those times, it was not as common for people to drink as much alcohol that it is nowadays. Do you agree? I don't know. I mean. I'm, uh, I know that drinking heavy alcohol, call, like 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 whiskey and scotch, um, and those mixed drinks were very prevalent because you know that was the thing that you did, you know, especially in the fifties and the sixties. Um, but I'm finding it alarming that a younger generation is having a disease so associated with alcohol. I'm wondering why they drink it so much. Is it? Do you think it's because? Because I'm more or less thinking now because of beer and wine than uh, than the harder harder drinks. Um, I think. Is I it think a, ever it, since the 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 what would you call that the older the the time period from like the fifties and the eighties like the older generation yeah. back then different things were were pop popping up in in the news and pop culture and cult cultural icons like 
like Johnny Cash. They they stood for for other things, and they represented different companies um, as as a as a brand ambassador. But nowadays, in our culture, ever since the '90s, with crazy college movies like American Pie, gosh, those are ter- terrible. It, I think our culture kind of glamorizes drinking alcohol to extremes, and maybe it's not the best thing, and I think we should definitely tone down on it. You think maybe the party lifestyle? Yeah, the party lifestyle and the college age group from, I believe it's 18 to 25, mm-hmm. and then like going on from then, 25 to 34, so that wouldn't make it 18 to 34. That's the college age group. Yeah. Yeah, and those people, especially people that, that grew up in the 90s, <laughs> are, are now, are now um, reaching the age of consent where they can afford that lifestyle and go out and do it. All right, well, that makes sense. So, um... I think maybe it's time we should go to a break or we come back. Yeah, totally. We'll talk about it. Do you have something else you want to, what did you want to talk about else? Um, uh, we can talk about it when we come back. When we come back? Yes, yeah. sir. We'll talk about it. is perfect until it's not we understand that life has its changes as your family grows we're here to help grow with you because taking care of your family is important to you and important to us your story starts here with cornerstone mortgage Patriot Bail Bonds has the best customer service in Bakersfield. Patriot has more five-star ratings than any bail company in Kern County. Plus, we're fast and affordable. If you run into the law, make Patriot Bail Bonds your first call. That's right. One call. That's all. If you're in jail, call Patriot Bail. At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, At the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Braymer Law we do for you. Keeping up with Kiko, and um, here we have uh, the story of of people who go to Virginia. Have you ever vi- visited Virginia? Have you ever heard of those people that go on on road trips across the country and they find these these really interesting little exhibits on the side of the road? And I love those. And they're all and like like the world's biggest cow or like. Or like a, the giant like burger boy in in Minnesota that holds like a giant burger right next to the burger joint, and people go there all the time, and it's just funny because like on movies and TV it always just seems like that's so crazy they probably just made that up for the show, but here we have a story of of this group of people that went to Virginia and they they found this this exhibit of dinosaurs that's what it is so what would happen this is the story this is the, so the exhibit is 
is dinosaurs in the Civil War. What? <laughs> <laughs> and so the story that the museum itself gives is what would happen if um, dinosaurs were used in the exhibit. And so the premise of the entire the entire um, museum is that uh, Colonel Sanders, who? <laughs> Whoever was in the, the Civil War. Uh, dinosaurs were hibernating, frozen in a cave to, um, for millions and years and years in the South. But General Custer and and his his friends during all the bombing between the the north and the south the the dinosaurs somehow woke up and came out of the cave and and the the south used the dinosaurs as weapons of mass destruction to take down the north and so the museum is just a whole bunch of scenes of war that just happen to include dinosaurs including this wacko scene of a soldier milking a dinosaur which is the strangest thing i've ever seen in my entire life wait uh, can i show wait okay um We'll come back to you with those pictures in a couple minutes, but I will continue with the story. So, because those are oh, great, crazy. So, if you go further into the museum, you'll see uh, um, uh, a, a sculpture of Stonewall Jackson rising up from the grave in the middle of the Civil War and fighting off a dinosaur with a bionic arm. <laughs> With a bionic arm. Where do these people get this stuff? And then, like, you think it can't get any stranger. But right after that, there's a there's an Indian chief sitting in the middle of a forest in his full Indian chief uniform. And and he's sitting, like, right in front of, like, a like a stegosaur. Or it's like a spinosaur. It's got, like, the, the you know, the... the the rid the rid ridges on its back and it's like all flat and he he painted like a mural on the ridges of this dinosaur and he's just sitting there like an Indian chief right next to this dinosaur that he that he painted on and right after that one is uh, <laughs> this is the best one really it's a picture of a pterodactyl flying away with. The Gettysburg Address oh that, it, that it oh just my snatched from the Abraham Lincoln's ha hands. So that's so. If you ever wonder, hmm, these people in my life are really strange. <laughs> I wonder if anything could possibly get weirder. Well, there's there's stranger things, as people have said, like the pterodactyl that stole the the Gettysburg Address and Stonewall Jackson fighting off a dinosaur in 1776 That's crazy. with a bionic arm. And if, if the museum is at capacity or closed, you can just go down the street to Foamhenge, which is an, uh, an entire museum dedicated to one exhibit which is the a recreation of Stonehenge, completely remade out of painted styrofoam. So, if you ever visit I've, Virginia, I've heard about that. Yeah, it's 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 real. It's real. <laughs> it's not just something that movies made up. Oh my gosh. No, movies make up things like the Demogorgon, but like real life makes up things like. The Dinosaur Museum in Foamhenge. So if you're ever in, in the neighborhood, maybe you could visit Foamhenge and the Dinosaur Museum. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's that. And yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can get those pictures. Um, dinosaurs in Virginia. So you can, these are all, okay, so that's really strange. Um, here's one of the pictures of like a Tyrannosaurus Rex 
like just hanging out right next to the Washington Mount Monument, which isn't even this <laughs> remotely <laughs> the same like time period. I think I think maybe Hollywood's getting a little too um, close to our minds here in the United States. For example, like I mentioned in before the break, I am a Red Cross volunteer, and I'm really excited to say that our disaster program manager will be bringing a class to us next month on how to prepare in case of a zombie attack. I'm not joking. It's a real thing. It's in the data, the Red Cross database of classes that we can teach, and, and we're going to teach it here in Bakersfield. Um... Quick tips, in case of a zombie attack, run to the next town, and we're pretty sure that if zombies come, they're going to be coming from L.A., so that means maybe you should say hi to your cousin who moved to Fresno like three years ago, and see if she's got a couch open. Um, another tip is that is that three things you want to put in your, in your emergency zombi zombie kit is not... A flamethrower, axe, and attack crystal, pistol. Um, it's actually food, medicine, and water. Because you're gonna be out of there for quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> but I still get, I still bring the flamethrower just in case. So um, we're coming up to the end of our show. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, not that I have prepared. Okay. So. Uh, Kiko, you'll be back next week at two o'clock. Right. Right. Two o'clock. So, we'll, so, so keeping up with Kiko, it was just a rare thing. He was he premieres at three, and next week he will be on at two o'clock. Sharp here at CurryCast.com, and just let everybody know that. Uh, that's what I say. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anything else before we go? Um, follow me on Instagram. Thank you.